All right, so today's another video on figs. That's coming up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm, and we're coming to you here today on a, well, just starting to be breezy, uh, 4th of July. So it's 4th of July 2018, and we've got another fig video. We actually just wrapped up uh, shooting our brown turkey fig video, which I'm gonna link for you here. Uh, this is another variety of fig that we have ripening up here really at the same time. So what you see behind me here is our blackjack fig. So blackjack figs. Blackjack fig is, a, is, is essentially, from what I can understand, and it's essentially a brown turkey fig that doesn't get quite as big. At least the tree itself is more semi-dwarfing. So uh, talk a little bit about uh, the area that I'm in here because we've talked about figs before. But uh, so what I, where we're at, we're actually um, at the very end of a rose bed that, um, we, that Lori and I have created really for Lori because she likes the pretty roses and a couple of them that smell amazing. Uh, but we got a couple things in that bed, but we've got this kind of corner. Uh, so we're down at the end of that. Uh, we kind of extended that, <clears throat> extended that, excuse me, extended that and created this little uh, kind of bed, a roundish bed that uh, we wanted to try to put another fig tree in. So as we were doing a little bit of research and trying to figure out what tree we wanted to put down here on this end, where we're kind of limited on space and need to control the size of that fig tree, uh, we came across the blackjack fig. So this particular tree, we got this fig from Reed at RSI Growers. Uh, we've talked about him several times. Uh, very impressed with his trees. He actually does all the grafting. Uh, and cuttings. He does them all here in Arizona. He's in Glendale, uh, right at about 59th Avenue and Bell. Uh, so we got this tree from him. And you know what? It's not quite two years old. I think, I want to say it's about a year and a half old. Um, so last year was its full first or full first full year. Uh, we got a couple of small fruits off of them in the fall, not too much. Uh, and very, very similar to the brown turkey as far as how it tastes. But the tree itself is more of a, a semi dwarf tree. So a little easier little easier to control <laughs> doesn't look like it at this point because he's already probably he's over six feet tall at his tallest point uh, but um, he is more semi dwarfing so if you've seen our brown turkey fig video uh, you can see how massive those trees get uh, this one I did do some pruning but not real heavy uh, just wanted to do some pruning as far as pruning them on the back side which is where we have our roses uh, and then let him kind of grow this direction also wanted to bring the height down just a little bit um, but a little bit easier to control the branching itself is not as thick as the brown turkey figs um, so it would be very easy to control this a little more <laughs> I know we had a couple questions of people um, asking us about fig trees and what might be good options as far as potted fig trees and while I think it would be difficult to grow any of the regular variety figs at least in Arizona in a pot if you had a large enough pot and were really diligent on your pruning this is one variety you could probably consider uh, again as long as the pots nice and big uh, one of the things here in Arizona you know these are um, Middle Eastern and Mediterranean type fruits. So they really thrive on that type of environment. And our environment, granted, it's a lot drier than some of those areas. Uh, if you irrigate well, we're essentially turning it into a Mediterranean area. So it does very, very well. It grows very, very strong uh, in our soil. So ultimately what I think you would need to do is make sure you keep it pruned back real heavy uh, and watch it because it'll get top heavy because each one of the branches has a lot of weight on it. Um, but back to the tree itself. So we do prune this tree. Uh, we also come through with the organza bags. We've talked about those several times to protect the fruit from birds. Uh, in this particular area, um, I think it's probably because of the rose beds and some of the amendments that we do inside that bed. We do have a tendency to get a little bit more ant pressure here uh, than we do back where our brown turkey figs are in our main orchard. Um, but for the most part, uh, the fruiting is really good. Uh, one thing that I don't think I've mentioned before, so we do come through and we cover, once we start seeing them turn a light brown we'll cover them with the organza bag uh, one of the challenges of what you need to be cautious with when you're working with fig trees is the figs if you break off a leaf in fact I'm gonna do it now if you break off a leaf they'll actually start to drip uh, this latex type caustic stuff coming out of here it also comes out of the branch itself um, so it's just kind of pulling up on the end of that now kind of, it won't be easy to see on camera but it does get that kind of caustic uh, uh, latex and it ultimately it can cause skin irritation now not only is it inside the branch itself but it's also actually really on the leaves so you want to be cautious make sure you're wearing a shirt maybe even long sleeves um, but you want to be cautious when you're working with uh, fig trees 
these because even just rubbing up against the leaves, I know Lori and I have found that we get kind of itchy. Uh, so you, you get this weird kind of reaction uh, when you rub up against these trees. So it's one of the things too that makes figs so difficult to find in the stores. You know, they're very hard to protect to harvest um, because it's just difficult and it, you know middle of summer it's hot sweaty uh, but hard to harvest and then they don't store well at all so once they're fully ripe on the tree you pretty much got to pull them sometimes you'll find that there's they're already starting to mold on the inside so they're actually already starting to go bad fully ripe on the tree still growing so and then of course they only last a couple days so the shelf life is very very short um, so very hard to find these uh, ripe in, in the stores. So actually getting your own tree, really the best way, no matter what, but particularly with figs. So blackjacks, so blackjacks, as far as the um, fruit itself, very, very similar to a brown turkey fig. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have Lori slide in, show you guys the what we have going on here. So we're still a little bit early as far as the fruiting on this tree. Um, still a lot of green figs. So we've got a lot of fruit coming up here over the next few weeks. Um, so we got a whole lot even down in here, uh, but we do have a ripe one back here. So now we talked a little bit about figs. It's going to be hard to pick up on camera, but we have it covered obviously with the organza bag, but it's starting to droop. So if you look at these, they're standing perfectly upright. Um, so there's nothing droopy about this at all. And of course they're green, uh, but once they start to ripen, they'll turn a light blush kind of reddish purple. You'll see streaks start coming in these. They'll start to swell uh, the eye starts to turn kind of pink um, and then once they're ripe um, which again it's kind of hard to see on this branch but it gets to be kind of floppy I'll see if I can get this organza bag off and show you what I mean usually with the ripe fruit it's kind of hard sometimes it'll want to just come right off but if you can kind of see that you can see it really is very very floppy so green ones here that are not ripe a ripe one here you can see it's really starting to droop uh, and so we know that that one's pretty much ripe also the color so we got a little bit of green up here near the stem but for the most part it's it's yellow here and then of course a nice dark purple as you come down to the bottom of that so this fruit is ready to go so we're gonna go ahead and pick it all you do to pick it is just basically hold it down at the stem and push down or against the um, kind of the growth of the fruit itself so that's a ripe fig so now the skin so the skin itself uh, we talked a little bit about that juice I just a little bit of that latex kind of came off right there with the top of the stem there's some latex uh, we talked about this in our brown turkey fig video too you can see the different colorations as it goes further down the fruit uh, but in the end it's a little green up here there's still gonna be some latex in there so I'm not gonna eat that uh, so if you're gonna eat, I'm gonna eat it here <laughs> but if you're gonna take these inside the house we would usually cut that stem off cut them in half make sure we don't have any mold or any ants or anything going on in there uh, and then have at it so, but as far as the fruit itself, you can see size-wise, um, probably a little bigger than a golf ball. Um, so these can get a little bigger than that. Not a whole lot, maybe the side of a billiard, size of a billiard ball, but not much more than that. Um, but just a good looking piece of fruit. Um, so, and as far as the fruit itself, so when you're gonna go to actually eat this and um, kind of just break it in half, what you do is just push your fingers down into the eye. That's an open eye right there. So push it down into that eye and open the fruit. So now if you've seen our brown turkey fig videos, you're going to really recognize this fruit. It's pretty much identical. So there's really not any difference between the two. Um, again, I think it's just the dwarfing habit of the tree that is really the only thing that makes a difference. But uh, still got the, um, that, that variation of color, like this pinkish. There's a little bit of brown tinge at the edge and a pinkish tinge there. Um, you've got uh, these kind of these cells up in here. Um, not quite. It's really not not quite i would say as juicy as the brown turkey figs are right now probably could have given this maybe another day on here i wouldn't go beyond that but maybe another day but uh, either way let's see how it tastes mm. good yeah brown turkey figs if you had a brown turkey fig this is essentially identical um, the fruit tastes the same uh, same consistency has that kind of ripe banana kind of consistency a few seeds in there so you got a couple little crunches in there uh, but yeah ripe banana still get that honey kind of aftertaste a real floral uh, not uh, fruity is kind of a weird description for that but uh, more floral um, I would say it's more floral uh, but like a floral honey kind of taste um, but uh, very very good so that's a blackjack fig 
So just want to thank you for joining us today. And you know what, if you haven't done so already, hey, subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. You know, we've got a lot of people that follow us now and we've got a lot of folks here in the valley and really all over the world that like to, in, to see what we're doing here in this harsh desert environment. We'd really love to have you as a subscriber. And hey, like and share the video. You know, if you've got anybody that you know that's really into fruit trees and wants to get some good ideas as far as what they might be able to do with fruit trees, again, particularly in a harsh desert environment like we have here in the Phoenix, Arizona area, we really like to share those things. Got a lot of videos coming up here over the next several weeks with our fruit trees really getting into full production and then starting starting to wane a little bit but really a lot of growth in the trees themselves really love to share that with you and hey if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section down below Laura and I would really love to interact with you guys and that's where we go so we look down there really like to see those comments and questions also if you have any suggestions any su we'll take them uh, we really love to see those and uh, interact with you guys so just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere so can you.